Hey everybody, Wayne here. In this video, um, we're looking at uh, NATO Air Commander, designed by Brad Smith, published by Holland Spiel. Um, this game is, as it says right on the cover, Solitaire Strategic Air Command in World War III. So in this video, I'm going to do my usual um, kind of little of a let's play playthrough tutorial. I have the game all set up for the beginning, um, beginning scenario. I'm going to explain, you know, the different counters, the cards. I'm just kind of explain and then hopefully play through the first turn. And then I also plan to have another video um, where I play through a later turn, a little less explaining. So do some, just I usually do it while I'm playing. Um, but then some of it will be to just uh, getting into it. So, all right. So this game, as we just uh, talked about here, is, and if you know anything about it, if you don't know anything about it, I'm just going to explain everything. Um, you are commanding the NATO forces against the Warsaw Pact, and they are coming in hot, and the Warsaw Pact is, is tough, and you are trying to hold them back, and you are running the, there is the ground component in the game, um, but you are running the air, right? You really control the air forces, the air wings of the different NATO powers, um, trying to hold back um, the Soviets here, the Warsaw Pact forces, so... The game is diceless. The game is built around these resolution cards. And what you are doing is you are essentially planning raids, which are also called missions. Um, and as you're assigning raids to missions, hoping to be successful, um, you are either providing close air support, you are doing FOFA, which is follow on forces attack. This game does have a lot of acronyms. Um, it's, I put a cheat sheet up on BGG. Um, you can see some of the, the acronyms. Um, I just have it. I keep it next to my my board as I play. Um, I'm a little more used to it now that I've played it so much, but you might want to do something like that, especially when you're starting out. Oh, okay, so you also can do um, what are called dead raids, which is uh, destruction of enemy air defenses. OKA, offensive counter air. OEW, offensive electronic warfare. Decap, which are decapitation strikes against um, Warsaw Pact leadership, and while you're, and then seed, just suppression of enemy air defenses. While you're doing these things, um, actually, that's a support mission. I'm sorry, that's a support mission that goes along with those primary missions. So the other ones I mentioned are the primary missions that you were conducting, and then the air escort and the seed, which you can see on the map here. Um, air escort, pretty self-explanatory. Seed is suppression of enemy air defenses. Um, or secondary missions. So when you're, you're picking a mission, kind of you're picking a raid, you're conducting it and you always are doing these um, secondary missions. So let me see here. Um, okay, what you're doing is when you're building these raids, you're using your aircraft, right? You're using your air wings. You have all your different aircraft. They have three different ratings on them. They are um, specified by country, you know, the United States, Germany, and then other ones. <laughs> um, you know, there's no national markers on them. Let's take a look at some of these aircraft counters here. We'll go ahead and we'll get them up and we'll look at some numbers here. I do not know what all the aircraft are per se. They do have cool silhouettes. I do like the style on them, but they don't list the names of them. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so go ahead, you guys. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Let me get it all zoomed in there. Okay, so you can see three different types of aircraft here. Starting off on the left. And these are the numbers below. Um, you have your um, air rating, which is the left number, so the six. So here on this, I believe it's an F-15. You have a six air rating. The middle number, ah, middle number is the ground rating. And the last number is the strike rating. And those ratings are used depending on the type of mission. Um, and it's, it's usually makes sense, right? So ground, say uh, close air support missions, use your ground rating. That middle one that's what makes sense which if you look so f-15 very good at air support or excuse me very good at air right air rating air combat the warthog in the middle here not so good at air but great at ground it's ground rating and then this aircraft which i don't really recognize uh, like a phantom maybe or something i don't know anyway he has an eight for strike rating so it's a specialty um Show you another unit, so you guys can see. They have the stealth fighter in here. Um, again, good for strike, not good for anything else. So what you're doing, you know, you're, you're conducting your mission, you're signing your aircraft, you're picking aircraft that um, 
are going to suit that mission, right? And that part of the mission. So let's look down here. So let's let's say we're assembling um, a raid, a close air support raid. We know what the important numbers are. Let's see what we can do with our aircraft. Let's see what we can assemble here, just as an example. So we're doing close air support, right? Hopefully you guys can kind of see. I think you should be able to see. Can I zoom in a little bit here? Whoop. Eh, doesn't really zoom in. That's okay. Um, we'll go ahead and do, like right here, it's raid nine. We'll just do over here so you can see a little better. There's a primary, air escort, and a seat. You know what? I'm gonna take the camera off the, the mount. That'll help. I know. There we go. We can get down in there. Okay, so. Say we're doing our first raid. We know we're going to do a close air support. Primary, air escort, and seat. So the primary, remember, we're doing close air support, so we know it's a ground. So we're going to say, okay, well, we want our best grounds. We want the Warthog here. Okay, good. Air escort, we want good air. We're going to go ahead and sign that at 15. And then seat, suppression of enemy um, air defenses, is a ground rating, secondary mission. So... I'm gonna go ahead and do, here we go. I think this might be the Phantom. F4 Phantom, isn't that what that is? Anyway, so you can see, now we've got, so the primary mission is close air support, but we need the air escort and the seed to succeed first. So when you're when you are uh, resolving your raids, you do the air escort first, and I'll, I'll teach you how to resolve later. Um, you do the seed second, and then if those both succeed, so those secondary missions, basically that allows the raid, okay, you got through, you got to the target, then you do the primary. Um, fortunately, the primary is just applying hits, and you're applying hits on, you know, your close air support, your FOFA, your OCA, whatever it is. So, pretty simple there, um, not that hard. What you're doing, though, you also want to make sure, so you can have up to five aircraft total, and you can have up to three as your, in your primary. Because you want to, usually, you want to inflict as many hits as possible. So say you're doing your primary. That seven, when you're doing, um, when you're determining hits. So say we succeed. Say it's with our air escort and our seed. We succeed. Now we're going to do our primary. Um, this is a close air support. What you do is you add up all the factors for your, that particular rating, which is ground for close air support. So seven, you divide by five, and then that's how many hits. So in this case, it would only be one hit. Well, that's lame. You don't want one hit. You want more than one hit. So we probably would have been like, okay, we're going to do, so that Groundhog, or Groundhog, that uh, Warthog, we're going to give him a PGM, a Precision Guided Munition. You have so many, and you can buy new ones as, as, the, as the turns go by. That doubles his rating automatically. So his 7 becomes a 14. And say, we're like, okay, that's good. And then I, you know what, I'm just going to put another Warthog too. I'm not going to give him anything else, but I'm just going to put him out there. So now you go ahead. You have two, a Warthog with a, a Precision Guided Munitions and another Warthog. That was 7 times 2, 14, plus 7, 21. 21 divided by 5. Now we're talking 4 hits. That's a good that's a good mission right there. 4 hits on close air support. That'd be a good mission. Um, you can also obviously add additional to air support and to seed. Because what you do is you, you need them to succeed, right? And what you're doing when you're resolving your missions. And here's where I'll explain the cards here. So the cards, these are these cards, the resolution cards. So the game is built around it, not use dice, use resolution cards. You flip them over every time you're resolving something. So say we're doing this mission with the air, we're doing this close air support mission with this air, this air escort, excuse me, and this seat. You resolve first the air escort. You take these resolution cards, you flip them over, and you look at the appropriate line. So in this kit, in this situation, we look at air intercept. Six. There's no our air escort, right? So our air escort is six. Air rating is six compared to the air intercept. NATO wins ties or the game wins ties, right? So this would actually be a fail, which if that fails, it scrubs the whole mission. The whole mission is aborted. And then you would also draw another card because the mission's aborted, basically implications that someone got hurt or damn air aircraft got damaged. So you draw another card. You look at that bottom right of the card, see the 10. And then you go ahead and you look at the number in the top right on the aircraft. Whatever's closest, that aircraft would take that hit. So it would be this 20. So this, uh, is it a Phantom, I think? I'm not sure. I don't know all my Cold War aircraft. But he would take a hit, so he gets flipped over. And he's damaged. And then that raid also was a failure in general. Now, 
that's why it's important when you're resolving, uh, you're, you're having your raids be prepared, right? You want all your raids to have enough to succeed. So when you start off, you may be looking at that and saying, well, then that's that's kind of tough, especially if you don't win ties. So it means I have to, the number has to be a five or less for you to succeed with this, right? With this guy. That's tough. Well, what do you do? There are ways to mitigate that. Number one, sign Warcraft. Boom. F15. Actually, maybe that's an F16. Hmm. Anyway, so F15, F16, maybe. All right, five and a six, that's 10. Or excuse me, that's five, that's 11. You know you're going to succeed now. In fact, definitely beats that six. And these cards will only go up to a 10. So you're basically guaranteed success there. Perfect. But then say you, you succeed there. Now you go on to ground, the ground attack, which was the seed, because you want to you have to get suppression of enemy air defense. You have to do that. Second, uh, it's a secondary mission you have to do. So we succeed on air escort. Now about seed. Seven, greater than five. You look at ground defense. You succeeded. That's great. Awesome. Succeed there. Oh, what about this one? Look, 10. You can't succeed. You failed. And not only that, one, two, three, four, five. We have five aircraft assigned to this raid. So this raid, we wouldn't have been able to assign anymore anyway. Even if we had said seven's not enough, and we had assigned them, a more, we couldn't assign them anymore. We only, have, we only put five aircraft on a raid. But there are, again, there are other ways. So first way to mitigate was to assign extra aircraft. What's another way? Oh, I'll show you. So down here on the tracks here, there are the dead track and the Oka track. So remember our mission was seed, suppression of enemy air defenses. Well, in the game, there's dead, which is destruction of enemy air defenses. And that's its own raid, as you can see right here. So as you're conducting dead raids, and you the primary raid, and it uses the strike rating, so it'd be good for stealth aircraft, or good for these specialty aircraft, you're doing those hits. You are raising the dead track. And as the dead track increases for each hit, say it's up here, it's at a two. So our dead track's at a two. We would add, whenever we do a seed, we're looking at that enemy air defenses, we're add two, or I should say we subtract two from the number drawn. So in this case, it still wouldn't help because it'd be 10 minus the two, because we were at two, the eight compared to the seven. We still would lose it. But what if we're up at four? What if we're at four dead? What if, it's, if we've done enough destruction, right? We've destroyed enemy air defenses, enough of them, that we run that mission, and even with this only a seven, and we have the worst card, or the, the strongest card, we draw a 10. It'd be 10 minus that four, that's six. Our seven beats them, successful. And then they have the same thing for, for the air, is Oka, which is offensive counter air. Um, and then also the offensive electronic warfare, which ties into the Oka, which increases the Oka track. We also have the Oka Raid up here. So you're doing the Oka Raid, you're doing the Dead Raid. Those are building these tracks up. These tracks that allow you to be more successful on your missions. Hopefully that makes sense on that one. Okay, so I talked about the units. I talked about the cards, these resolution cards that drive the game. Um talked about how you can assemble your raids and kind of the different the primary air escort and seed what allows you to be successful with the raids talked about some of the different tracks down here um, from the offensive counter air oka dead destruction of air defenses precision guided munitions this is your resource um, point track and then a game turn track which has reinforcements on there um, okay so let's just say let's kind of do a example turn here Without messing around with this stuff too much. Um, start off the game. You got everything all set up. Oh, actually, let me explain this stuff first here too, just so you guys know that. Um, when you're looking at the Warsaw Pact and the NATO forces here, so this is the abstracted ground forces over here. These are the two armies, right? Blue is NATO, red is Warsaw Pact. These different armies have cohesion ratings on them. And that is their total power, right? That's their effective, very, you know, very abstracted, right? This game is, you're, you're controlling the air forces. You're not diving into all the ground stuff. So you only these cohesion ratings, you can see, you know, we're looking at a two for the NATO, three for Warsaw Pact. And that'll come into play um, when you do certain uh, actions, certain things happen. 
basically we do the ground combat phase. All right, so you're starting off the game here. You get it all set up. This is the setup for the regular game, or excuse me, the uh, like main scenario, which is kind of the build-up scenario. It's considered the easiest scenario. It's not that easy, but that this game is just a, it's a tough game in general. But that's okay. So we're all set up here. Um, oops, barring our guys over here being all crazy. So. There's a reinforcement. Do, 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 do. Okay, get them back here. All right, so ready to go here. What you do, you start off, and there actually is a really nice player aid in the back of the rule book here. What I did is I photocopied it, um, and I printed it off, so I actually have it set up um, in my little setup here. So I'll actually show you guys here if you want to see. My little setup. I've got the back of the rule book there, and then I've got my own little player aid I made and I uploaded to BGG. It is up there to download and print off if you want. So, um, on the back of here, it explains, it has the whole sequence of play in order, which is really nice. That's why, I mean, I love this thing. It just it keeps me, that's how I was doing the solitaire game and really any game. I want to have the sequence of play, like not in the middle of the rule book. I want to have it separate and this does allow me to have that. So, um, we'll go ahead and first, and this will explain more as I play here. So the first turn here, turn one, receive objective phase. So the first phase of the game, you pull two objective cards. So these are a stack of objective cards here, and you're gonna be pulling two every turn. And you wanna try, you really wanna try to be successful with these. So let's look at the first one. Shuffle, shuffle all object, objective discards and draw cards into the deck, drawing two new objectives. If this card is drawn at that time, it is a null objective, which we had no. We'll still shuffle because remember, we just get to keep that in mind that if we draw that um, that one again, it counts as a null objective, right? So it's a non-existent objective. That's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and draw again. The big push. So Kerr expects five successful close errors. See another example of uh, acronyms that I don't understand. I don't know what so Kerr is. It's obviously some sort of commanding thing, but I don't, I don't, I don't know what that is. Supreme Air Commander Europe, maybe? Okay, expects five successful close air support raids to be conducted this turn. All right, so that's a tough one, but that's that's number one objective. So we know we're gonna have to do five close air support raids, and it's gonna be that one is gonna be tough to do. Um, and I'll explain what's on the objective cards here with the second one. So number two, U.S. Fifth Corps counterattacks. Commander Sentag requests four close air support hits in Sector Charlie. You might say, what's Sector Charlie? Well, I will explain. So, on the map here, with our NATO forces and our Warsaw Pact forces, it is divided up into six thrust lines. The Warsaw Pact forces are following these thrust lines to get to the end, right? They're fighting us, trying to get to the end, trying to get through Germany. Um, each one uses the NATO phonetic alphabet to describe it. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot. So, in this one, we want four, four close air support hits in Sector Charlie. So Charlie here is where we would want to do our close air support um, missions here. We want to get four hits, which remember, if you remember, um, you want, you'd want up to 20, at least 20 ground rating, because then divide by five would be four, four hits. So at least 20. So that is our other objective. Um, success. So if we succeed, right? So if we get those four close air support hits later in the, later in the turn, we would get five resource points. And that Warsaw Pact retreat, or excuse me, the Warsaw Pact would retreat one in Sector Charlie. If we fail, so if we didn't get those four um, close air support hits, we'd lose three resource points. And they can go into negative. All right. So it resets eventually. But anyway, so that one looks really tough. That one looks very doable. So it's a doable, very tough. Those are two objectives. Do a recon phase. It's the next phase. So what this is, and this is very abstracted, um, basically what you're doing is you're just picking the type of recon you want to do, which there's battlefield surveillance, which allows you to examine the resolution card, which also has a vent on there. I don't think I explained that, didn't I? So on a resolution cards, when it's looking at the numbers for resolution, underneath, there's also an event, which in this case, situation normal, no effect. Well, it could be something like territorial here, all NATO forces occupying a 3VP FIBA space have their cohesion value increased by one. That's a good one for us. It's a good one for NATO. 
So what that means is obviously we in our NATO, NATO forces, a three VP FIBA. What that is, so three VP is these cities here that have three plus RP on them. Those are three VP, there's only four of them. One, excuse me, one, two, three, four. And then if we were occupying them and it was a forward edge of battle area, forward edge, yep, forward edge of battle area, FIBA, again, with the acronyms in this game, um, forward edge of battle area. So if right now it doesn't count as FIBA because there's not the forward edge of battle area. If the Warsaw Pact forces had destroyed and gotten down there right here, then this would be the forward edge of battle area. So does that make sense? All right. Hopefully it does. So those are the resolution cards and those are the events on there. So when we're doing our recon phase here, we're looking at battlefield surveillance, or we want to locate a headquarters which allows a decapitation strike, special kind of attack, or we want to locate the staging area, which damages FOFA, which is follow on forces attack, which FOFA, follow on forces, are the reinforcements that the Warsaw Pact gets near the end of the turn, which those are determined by these cards up here Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Fox, right? All the thrust lines. When you get to those reinforcement phases, you're flipping them over. And so you're saying, okay, Alpha, say this was the reinforcement phase. Alpha, we're going to want to do the, um, we want to figure out how much the Warsaw Pact gets. Right now, they're at a four cohesion rating there. He gets another four. He goes up to an eight, which they max out at eight. So that would have been really good for him. Or that will be really good for him, honestly, once it gets to the reinforcement phase. Um, and those are the different recons. And so what you're doing for recon is you're just, because it is a little more abstracted, you're not doing any sort of raids. You're just flipping and resolving. Basically, the game says you have a recon rating of six, which is influenced by Oka, by the way. So if your Oka was at a two, let's say, you flip, you resolve. Well, we would have succeeded anyway because it's only a three, but be that three. And if our Oka was at two, it would be minus two. So three minus two is a one. So definitely succeed. So whatever recon uh, mission we had chosen, we would have succeeded at. Okay, let's move on to the... I don't want to go into super, super detail. Like I don't want to explain the game, but I, I don't... I don't want to explain every little thing a hundred times over. This, this video will be way too long then. Um, you'll learn it as you play it, trust me. So onto the air planning phase. And this is where we're building those raids, right? Those raids we talked about. Um, the air planning phase is, okay, I need close air support. So remember this, uh, this objective here? We need four close air support hits in Charlie. So there's Charlie. So I'm going to say, okay, raid one. I'm going to put over in the close air support box over here on Charlie. And I know I want to get at least four hits. So I'm going to need at least 20 strike. Or excuse me, 20 ground. Sorry, not strike. 20 ground rating. So I'm going to take my um, my Warthog here with his seven. Put him up there. I'm going to give him a precision guided munition. So I'm going to double that to make it a 14. So remember to take down on the track. That one. And I also want to do, let's see, what is he at? He's at 14. So I need at least six more. Let's go ahead and just do the this other guy here with the seven. Go ahead and put him. Um, up there as well. So that puts it at 21. So I know if this mission succeeds, they're going to do 21 ground, which is divided by five, is rounded down four hits. So it'd be four hits. That's, that would succeed on that mission. Now I'm going to make sure it succeeds though. I got the ground taken care of. Now I need to do escort and seed. So the air escort, hmm, I definitely want it to be, I only have two up there, so I can go ahead. Let's do, for now we'll do six here, because he's a tough one. And then for seed, so we'll figure it out. Uh, Let's do, let's do five, and then I really want him to succeed. So I'm gonna use a PGM, give him precision guided munition, so it doubles his from a five to a 10. So that'll definitely succeed there. And then we've used one, two, three, four aircraft. I can do another one. Um, I'm gonna do another air because I want that this mission to succeed because I wanna get that objective card completed. So this is, I mean, you know what? And here's the deal. Later on in the game, as you're going, you realize that like, you're committing a lot of resources for one raid. You're not going to be able to do as much. You, you realize you can't, but you're also going to get, you're going to get these. They start off at zero, Oka and dead. But as they go higher up, you don't have to do as much air escort or seed, suppression of enemy um, defend, air defenses, because you're going to have sort of an innate, you've already destroyed enough that you don't need to send as much along on the raids. Hopefully that makes sense. So that one looks pretty good. Um, what's the other one? Five successful closer support raids. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's definitely not going to happen. So like raid two, um, we want, you know, you'd want to put somewhere else. Okay. Um, now go ahead and you're, get your guys ready. Put them out there. There. Okay. 
Um, in reality, what I would do playing this, I'd do the one for the mission, or excuse me, for the objective. So I'd do the close air support here, raid one and Charlie. But then I, instead of doing any more like closer support raids, I would start working on dead and Oka um, because then those are going to get those tracks up to make it easier later on. So really that's what I would do, which I will explain one of them right now. So the stealth fighter, as I showed earlier, is a special, is the kind of the one special unit. So you look at his stats, he's got a good strike. Um, the rest of it's lame, but he's got a good strike rating. S for stealth. What that means is um, he... When he goes on missions alone, has a higher chance of succeeding because it's a stealth aircraft. So what you might say is, okay, I want him to do him on dead or oka, okay, excuse me, <clears throat> offensive counter air. So I'm gonna get that oka up, and I'm gonna give him a PGM, which will double his strike from a six to a twelve. So he gets two hits in instead of just one. Okay, got him ready. Got them ready. Let's go ahead and move on to um, air resolution phase. Excuse me, the raid resolution phase. Boom, raid resolution phase. So what you do, I wanna do Oka first because Oka is gonna allow me to build up that Oka track. Now, you may see this box down here, OEW Escort, Offensive um, Electronic Warfare. That one, you can't do right away. You can only, if it starts in turn two, you can start doing it. So turn one, you cannot do it yet. So in turn two, you can and you will. You will want to do it every turn. All you have to do is assign an air, two aircraft with at least one in their air rating each of them, you set, assign them to here, and it's gonna automatically move the OPA track up one. You'll flip the counter, so it says OEW on the back, so you can see the OEW, so you know you've done an OEW mission, and then it goes up one. And so it may go up, say, one from that. Say we did this, say it was turn two, right? And I had two guys there, and I did that. It goes up one, so now it's from zero to one, our OCA's at one, and now we go ahead and do our OCA with our stealth fighter, OCA mission. So he's going to go in with the stealth fighter, special rules. He does not flip for air escort, but he does resolve um, the seed. However, it's only at a 10 and he do look at both numbers. So basically what it is with the stealth fighter, he goes on a mission. If he goes on it by himself, you flip a card, you see what the air to intercept and the ground defense are. If either are 10 missions fails and he's destroyed because he doesn't have a, he's a weak unit. He doesn't have a um, reduced side. It's either this or destroyed. In which case, three and a two, he succeeds. So Oka, he gets two hits in. So Oka with two hits would move from the one, one two. It's at a two now. So now it makes everything a little easier on the air defense, um, the air rating. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and look at one of our raids here. So say our raid number one, our close air support raid on Charlie, on thrust line Charlie here. Remember, that's, that's our objectives. We want to do a lot of damage here. We go ahead, we look, we have it set up where we have, um, we did a little overkill on this one, um, just because I want you want to make sure it succeeds, especially to begin. So we actually already have an 11 on our air rating. So you remember you resolve air escort first, then seed, then you do the primary mission. So we have an 11 on air escort. So we really can't fail anyway. So you flip, you look, an 11 is greater than even a 10 because you lose on ties. So we succeed no matter what, but technically it's six minus our Oka which our Oka right now is at two. So actually it's only a four. So really we didn't even have to send, say this aircraft, right? If we had known ahead of time, which we don't know for sure because we don't know what the cards say. We only really need to send that guy because even if he only has a six, just him with a six, it would have been six. Oh, failure. Nope. Because remember minus two for the Oka. So that six would have became a four. Six would have been greater than four. Would have succeeded on the air. Then you resolve the seed, which again, our guy's at a five. He has a PGM, so it does double it to 10. We have no dead. We did not do a dead mission. Sorry, we have no destruction on the air defenses. Basically, we have not destroyed any air defense, so it's 100%. So as long as we don't flip over and get a 10, which we did. So we failed, which is really bad luck. But sometimes that's what happens, right? Even your best plans, you think, yep, I, he's a 5. I did a gave him a precision guide ammunition, doubled it to 10. Only chance he could fail is if I flip and get a 10 which we got a 10 for ground defense. So he did fail. What that means is now, like I explained before, so it's a aborted mission, but we now also look and we say, okay, we flip another card and we look at the numbers on the aircraft. So it's that top right number. We compare it to the number in the bottom right of the card. So 13, we compare it to up here. What's the closest to 13? 
Let's see. Well, nope, it's going to be this uh, Staircraft here. Too bad. Number 20. Go ahead and we flip him over. He's damaged now. And now we move on. We resolve raid 2. Um, as you can see, even the best laid plans, right? Best laid plans and men's and mice. It's, it's, it, that's what happens, um, unfortunately. Move on. You go ahead and get him next time, right? Um, all right, so let's go ahead. Speaking of which, let's move on ourselves. So I'm not going to resolve the rest of that. The other, the other raid, forget that. So we're going to say that we're moving on. Um, you've completed all your raids, all your, your air planning, and then you've done your raid resolution here. You go ahead, you look at your objectives. You look at your, you've, you've failed an objective, you multi, you take away your, so for instance, the big push, we need to do five successful close air support raids. We did one. Actually, no, it failed, so we did zero. So failure, lose one RP for each close air support raid under five, it does not score one hit. So we're gonna lose five RPs. We're gonna go flip this over, negative five. That's really unfortunate. Um, and then we go ahead and we look at another one, which this one did succeed. Success! We got five RPs, so we gave them all back. So we're back at zero. If we had succeeded on both, it would have been real good, but we didn't. That's okay. The objectives are hard. It's hard to do them. So you're moving on. Um, keep that card for later resolution. Now we do the ground combat phase. What we're doing is we're drawing a card, our resolution cards as usual. We're drawing a card for each of the thrust lines. And what we're doing is we're comparing, we're taking the card. We're going to look at this attack resolve number, gray here. We're going to add that to our NATO cohesion. We then also add in or subtract from the Warsaw Pact any close air support hits, which if we had succeeded, say that close air support hit up there had succeeded, or the close, excuse me, the close air support mission, right? Raid one, if that raid had succeeded, we were set to do, what was it? Four hits, right? Four hits. So raid one on Charlie, we have these little markers. Put it four and put it right there. Now we know, and let's just say we did. Now we're going to pretend it did work just as I'm showing you guys. So that one worked. So now when we go through and resolve, we would look, we compare, and we would take care of that too. What do I mean by that? Let's just go through. So you're resolving for each line. I just go down in order. So for alpha, we have a three. Our NATO force has a three. We add in one on this card as a one compared to the four. So four versus four, fortunately, for us, Warsaw Pact uh, wins on ties. So they destroy that NATO army. They get to advance one. So the NATO or the Warsaw Pact army advances and the little tank here. And there's a two, that's two VP. So they get two VP for taking that, for taking Hamburg. All right, now we go to Bravo. We have a three, so we flip to resolve. Plus one, puts us at a four. They also have a four, so again, we lose because we lose ties. So they get to advance and a two. So they, two VP, excuse me. So now they have four VP. Uh, here we go, Charlie. Here's where it should be good for us. Flip to resolve, two. Add to our four, six. Technically we were more than them anyway, because a six um, greater than the five. So we actually would have uh, knocked them down one anyway. But we also had plus four for our four close air support hits. So our six becomes a 10. Fortunately, if it had been one more, it would have been more than double, and we would have knocked them down double, uh, knocked them down two or made them retreat, excuse me, or knock them down too. Because they're in the starting spot, they can't retreat, but we also only got um, five more. So it wasn't more than double, it was only double. So we did take a damage, is my point. I know it, it's a little complicated when you're trying to explain it, um, but once this way uh, I'm saying like, you play this game, you wanna play a whole game, by the end of it, you'll be good, but it will take, there is a hurdle to learning it at first. Anyway, so all that, he does take a hit, he does not destroy us, does not push us back. I'll take it. Let's resolve Delta. One plus our four, same as our five, so he's destroyed. Yeah, this is not good. It is freaking, they're marching. All right, let's resolve on uh, Echo. Zero plus two, so it destroys us. He advances. And that was, uh, I didn't resolve that raid, so that may have made a difference. I mean, I'm sure it would have. Um, let's see, and then Foxtrot. Our two plus two is four against his three, so he is does take a damage more than him. All right, now we look at our objectives. Any com we completed, we apply the results there. So one Warsaw Pack retreat in Sector Charlie. So Charlie here, um, he would be he would do a retreat. He did not. Um, let me see. So 
He can't retreat because obviously he's in his, his home spot. They're never destroyed. What we do if they can't retreat is you, um, they take two cohesion hits. So it's four cohesion becomes only a two. So that's pretty good. All right. Now we do the reinforcement phase. So that was all the ground combat phase. He's abst It's abstract. You're comparing some numbers. You flip. You also compare to the missions you did. Those are the big factors, what missions you did. So we do our reinforcement phase. Um, I'm sorry, I bumped the camera. Um, we resolve revealed reinforcements for the Warsaw Pact, which we did not reveal any. And how they get revealed was during that locate staging area back in the recon phase at the beginning of the turn. That's when you can see what the follow-on forces will be. And that's also when you can do those follow-on force attacks to try to reduce those. So in this case, we're just going to flip them, um, do them in order. So alpha, you look at the Warsaw Pack reinforced, the red, it gets plus four. So this four becomes an eight. And you go ahead and you go on down through. Um, Bravo gets plus three. So this four becomes a seven. As you can see, they're quickly becoming very powerful. Charlie, plus two. This two becomes a four. Delta, plus three. Five becomes an eight. Echo, plus one. Oh, that's good. Only one. And then finally, Fox Trot, plus one. So this two becomes a three. The last couple were pretty good for us there. Now we go ahead and put out new cards for uh, okay, and that'll be for the next turn for when they do their reinforcements. Um, now we do our own, so we flip a resolution card. We look at the NATO reinforced. Thankfully, it's at a seven, so that's good. So now we get seven. We can assign them any any manner we want. So we can go ahead and say, okay. Who's, who's getting beat up a little bit? Who's getting who's having a tough time here? Let's go ahead and look at uh, okay at Nuremberg here. We have seven to spend. We only have we have three here. He's at an eight. Let's add four more to put him at seven. So we have three left. Let's go ahead and put those three over here in Bremen. So our three will go up to a six. Just to kind of start holding back somebody so they can't just come marching through. So if they get moving and every turn they're moving one, they're going to get to the end and you're going to lose. Simple as that. All right. So that was the reinforcement phase. Now we go on to the random event phase. So this is where if we had um, succeeded in our battlefield surveillance during the recon phase, remember we would have been able to look at the event card uh, and either keep it or put it at the bottom of the deck. Um, this one. So we're drawing for this turn. Our event, no situation normal, no effect. So that's good. Um, there are times where you're going to get something bad, something good. Let's see, let's get another one. EMP. All air units in the repair box are moved to the damage box. Okay. So nothing there now, but we are, I'm going to say that one still failed. So I'll show you that in a bit. All right. Oh, um, those are random events. Now we do the resource point phase. Here's where we earn our resource points besides the objectives, besides completed objectives, we get resource points for this for cities and then where the Warsaw Pact forces are. So you get one resource point for every Warsaw Pact force still in their starting box, which unfortunately for us is only one, two of them because they advanced on four other fronts. So that's two resource points. And then we get one resource point for every three VP city, which there's four of them on our side and none of them have been taken yet. So one, two, um, three, four. So four plus two, six. So that's six um, resource points, and then if the dead or the Oka track are maxed out, which has to come later in the game, you're not going to be able to get that many hits right away, um, which should not apply to us, so we're just at our six. So our VP, or excuse me, our RPs, we have six resource points for this turn. Now what you do is you start off spending them. If you have any damage or repaired, you can put them, you know, you start moving them along. We don't have any yet because this is the first turn. You can also buy pilots and precision guided munitions. Pilots are two each. Pilots, when you have a pilot, which we will definitely buy one. Pilots allow you, you send them along a mission as long as they have a matching color. So this is you know, blue is the United States. So you send them along, say, on this uh, strike aircraft here. And if we had flipped a card that didn't, that uh, we had a mission fail, a mission aborted, you can s discard the pilot chip and you flip again. And you get to use whichever card you want, whichever card's most advantageous. Pretty, pretty nice, pretty good thing to have. Basically, they're like a redo. You know, they're like a mulligan chit. All right. Um, okay, and then you can buy PGMs, which unfortunately, well, actually we do. So, one, two, three. We'll spend three resource points to buy another PGM, because you definitely want to have those. 
Let's see here. Okay. And now that's the spend RP phase. Now you go to turn end phase. Turn end phase, air mission display step. So go ahead and take you on your raids, markers, put them back. And all your aircraft, you go ahead and put them back. So any of them that are just fine, they didn't take any hits, whatever, you can automatically just put them back in your basing box here. So all these guys are put back in our basing box. This not didn't take any hits. They, they did not damage anything like that. But we'll get to them. Sorry for the delay here. It's like I said, when you're sitting there um, messing with it, it's a little easier than doing it while you're scanning up and everything. All right, so let's get this bad boy back there. Okay, so uh, we do have a damaged aircraft. So what we can do, or air wing, so this this uh, aircraft is damaged. We can put him right in basing. We can say, don't care if he's damaged, get back to, you know, we got a war to fight here. We got That's going to happen. Boom. Or you can say, no, um, I'm going to want to repair him eventually. He's a good, it's a good unit. And he is a good unit to have. It's a good unit to repair. So I mean, not all units are created equal. I'll tell you that right now. Four, seven, six, that's a good unit. Um, some of the other ones, you, I would say leave damaged. But when you got a four, seven, six, normally, you got to get him repaired. So put him in the damage box. Now, next turn, during that resource point phase, we can spend resource points to either move them to repaired and then move them to basing or move them straight from damage to basing, although that does cost an extra resource point. So that's up to you to decide how to spend them. All right, do the OEW step. Put the camera again. So the OEW step is, remember, on turn one, it wouldn't have applied, but I pretended we did one. So the OEW would be if we had that OEW escort guys, so they'd go back. And then that counter, remember it has OEW on it. The OCA counter, we had flipped it over so it says OEW to show that we did an OEW raid. You would actually flip it back to OCA and then you move it back to one. Basically showing that those OEWs, they're just, it's a temporary boost. It's not a guaranteed boost, it's temporary. All right, now you do the you do what's called a dead Oka recovery step. So this is where you're looking at your dead track, you're looking at your Oka track. Now we're dead destruction of enemy air defenses, Oka offensive counter air. So starting with dead, you flip a resolution card. You look at the air intercept number. If it's an even number, you move it your back, move them left. If it's an odd number, no effect. So no effect on dead, which was already all the way left. But you always want to flip the card for something. Always want to flip the card. So you want to keep them cards going. Oka, flip it, air intercept, zero, even number. Unfortunately, so it's one, go drops down to another one. That's too bad for us. Okay, two, two more steps left in a turn. Nuclear escalation steps, so you look at the Warsaw Pact VPs, which were only at four. If they were at 20 or higher, you'd start determining whether they're gonna engage, NATO forces are gonna basically gonna be fed up and engage in nuclear war. Fortunately, they're not, because <laughs> it's not at 20. Um, and then, cause if you, once that happens, you lose and then Warsaw Pact VPs, which step is besides the VPs for the cities that they get as they take the, the cities. You also look if they're at the end of a thrust line, oops, here, 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 at the end of, uh, turns one through six, they get an extra VP just for that. And that's a turn. So I believe I've covered everything. I hope I have. Um, let's see, we covered all the air units, what they do, all the numbers on them, the cards, resolution cards. Objective cards, how the map set up, the thrust lines, uh, you know, the Warsaw Pact forces, NATO forces, cohesion ratings. You know, you put, they're pushing, they're pushing down these thrust lines. You're whole, trying to hold them back. Um, I'm gonna do one more video where I do, run through a turn and kind of do everything, so you can see every little bit of how a turn does. This was just more of a general sort of um, tutorial um, and kind of run through a turn, just quick and easy. So, if you want to see more about the game, check out that second video. All right. Thanks, guys.